who can fix your computer, you know, fix your DVD player, take care of these technical issues so that uh, you can settle down to the manly task of studying Torah. There you go. So the outstanding feature of today's Jewish world is the contrast uh, between the resiliency and competency of orthodoxy and the angst and depression that characterizes the non-orthodox Jewish world. Like what Rob says, br uh, bring back Esther for the woman's point of view on the whole lot thing. <laughs> he just wants to he see just wants Esther, Esther back. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, real good. So what did you just say? <laughs> The outstanding feature of today's Jewish world is the contrast, contrast between, between the resiliency and confidence of the orthodoxy and the angst and depression inherent in the non orthodox So, like, you want to expand on that? Yeah, well, see, like, uh, Lloyd thought, oh, we can do things in a new way. We can take the best of the world around us. You know, we can live, you know, in this exciting area where they're so prosperous and we can prosper too. And everything will be great if we just, like, shake things up and do things new. and. No, don't be so clannish and, you know, don't stick to ourselves, but we can just, like, move in with the Goyim and we can, like, everything's going to be great. We can, you know, we can have them over to our homes and we'll, we'll be just part of their society and we just need to kind of, you know, let down some of our hang-ups. That's kind of the approach of reform and conservative Judaism. And then Orthodox Judaism says, here are the rules. And, uh, like, for instance, you can't, we have kosher grape juice. Like, that makes no sense for me, a non-Jew, like, coming to Judaism, like, kosher grape juice, why, like, you know, why do Jews have to be involved in the production of, of grape juice? Like, how can, you know, how can grape juice ever not be kosher? But the whole theory is, if, if you don't drink with the non-Jews, you're much less likely to sleep with the non-Jews and to make babies with the non-Jews. Correct. And so there are all these rules that are like just so tiresome and cumbersome and and between you and me I don't always keep them all the time, you know. I'm I you know, there are one or two that I you know, sometimes I'm a little shaky on, but I still I don't I don't dismiss them. I don't say, Oh, the rules are wrong, I'm right. No, that's I a say, bad attitude they have. Yeah, no. I, so I admit the need for these rules and the need for these boundaries and so even if it makes us look behind the times and clannish and you know, racist and bigoted. And What's the word they have? Insular. Insular and regressive and patriarchal and misogynistic. Those are a lot of big words. Right. Hey, even whatever names they call us, we just like, we follow the Torah. You know, that's, that's our task. It's not to be popular. That's right. Uh, it's, a very, it's a very good point. We will never be popular because there's just, see, God has set it up in such a way that there's just so few Jews on the planet, yeah. you know, that no matter how many Jews keep Torah, it's not going to make us any more popular in number. It's, we're still going to be a tiny speck in the ocean. We're just a, you know, one quick piss in the sea. That's all we are. And speaking of that, <laughs> I drank a lot of water tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we want to call it a quits there? You want to call it a night? All right, that was an interesting show. I, you know what? I'm going to be honest. Uh, tonight's show was made by Esther. Esther made tonight's show. She stole the show. So once again, a big round of applause for our studio audience. Came out here tonight. You know, and and uh, everybody, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. And once again, next week, we'll be back here at the House of Raps. It's so important that the kitties out there stay off the crack and stay in your